I have been scuba diving the waters off the Hawaiian Islands in California for the past 30 years, studying and documenting our beautiful coral reefs and kelp forests as a marine biologist. As an avid surfer from the Banzai Pipeline, Velziland, Honolulu Bay all the way over to San Onofre, I've seen a dramatic change to the waves over the years. What makes a wave hollow? A long, continuous reef break? Why are some of our classic surf spots turning into mush? The answers to these questions can be found under the surf. is a living system like the human body. It is a complex interrelationship between the surf, reef, corals, dolphin, all the way down to the little sea urchins. Every surf spot has its own unique ecosystem of reef creatures. Waves shape the reef and corals can shape the wave. Corals drag on the underside of the wave, making it more hollow and perfect. Today, many of Hawaii's reefs are under attack. Climate change, rising sea levels, runoff and pollution are stressing and killing our corals. We need to study these factors and understand how to protect our beautiful surf spots for our future generations. I've been surfing worldwide since age three with my father, Harold Lilly, who learned to surf from the Duke himself. I've been doing a number of underwater movies about our marine life, but decided to make a movie about the reefs we love to surf over, but know so little about. Let's go on an underwater tour of our famous surf spots with my dive buddy and still photographer, Pamela Matson. Pam, like myself, has surfed these reefs since she was three years old with her parents the Whitmans.
Our adventure begins on the North Shore of Oahu. Everybody knows Waimea Bay. From Greg Knoll, Eddie Aikau, to Dick Brewer, this is one of the most famous waves in the world. Waimea Bay is not only an amazing wave to watch from up on the cliff or out in the water surfing, but from underneath the water at 40 to 60 feet deep. It's truly an amazing area to see how the giant surf actually can shape a reef. At one point in time, Waimea Bay was a flat lava flow. You can see this in areas underneath the waves on the reef right now. But big giant rocks broke off of that lava flow over the years and started rolling around on the reef. These giant rocks, weighing tons and tons and tons over thousands of years, started making holes, dimples, big pukas in the reef. The rocks kept rolling around in the big surf in the wintertime. After a long time, these giant rocks carved huge bowls in the reef. You can see Pam diving through the area of these big rocks in the reef, and this is right up at the lineup at Waimea Bay. If you notice at Waimea, years ago, the wave was a little bit more continuous. It didn't section quite as much. Now the wave is breaking and backing off a little bit and then breaking again. This is gonna be the pattern of the future for Waimea Bay. These holes in the reef are getting bigger and bigger and bigger every year. They're going to actually start connecting with each other over time. When the wave hits the shallow flat part of the reef, it jacks up and gets more hollow, and then it goes over one of these big holes in the reef, these bowls with all the giant boulders, and that causes the wave to flatten out a bit. On the left side of Waimea Bay, it's more of a bluff and a cliff area, as you can see. Lots of fish. Lots of caves. Lots of cool marine creatures, from turtles to little cone shells. By the way, that cone shell there is the type that rolls around in the surf that makes the famous puka shells. Sunset Beach, on the other hand, is completely different. Sunset Beach, similar to other right-hand point breaks like Hanalei, used to be old riverbeds. During the Ice Age, the sea levels were 100 to 125 feet lower, and big rivers flowed off the mountains out into the sea and carved valleys just like they do on land right now. As the sea rose over thousands of years, and covered this valley and these cliffs, it formed the surf that we know as Sunset Beach. Quite a number of surf spots throughout the world are formed this way, way back during the Ice Age. Sunset Beach, once again, like Waimea, used to have a little bit more continuous break, where you could ride from the point over to the bowl and have the wave connect all the way through. But unlike Waimea, Sunset Beach has, or used to have, a lot of coral. You can see in the reef at sunset, 
There's a lot of cracks and caves in the reef that are caused by the surf over the years. These cracks and caves and little valleys at one point in time were filled with coral. That made the reef much more flat in between the point and the bowl in a much more connective wave between the two. But over the years, the corals have died, and now there's deeper areas in between the flat parts of the reef. Way back in these caves, you can see cool creatures like these cowrie shells, all types of different fish, crabs, even this way cool porcupine fish with these big moon eyes. They love to live in the dark cracks and the dark caves under the reef at sunset. Back in some of those caves, I've even found surf leashes wrapped around rocks, 30 feet back in caves. That means somebody, maybe somebody watching right now, got sucked back into these caves, leash wrapped around, broke their leash or broke their board and hopefully got out okay. But once again, the dying off of the corals at sunset directly affects the waves because the corals drag on the underside of the wave, make it more hollow, and they also fill the cracks and the little canyons to make it more of a continuous flat reef. Shark's Cove, in between Waimea Bay and Pipeline at Pupakea, is an amazing place to sit and watch the surf in the winter. Looks totally different than the summertime. These gigantic waves in the winter crash into this old lava flow and hit it directly head on. From underneath the water, you can see how these giant waves are shaping the reef and changing it day by day. It's one of the most visual places on the North Shore to watch the surf when it's up. And then in the summertime, it's one of the best places to scuba dive, right underneath where those huge waves are crashing into the lava flow. When you walk out to go on a dive and you look up at the reef, it's jagged and sharp as can be. Somewhere you definitely don't want to get washed on top of. There's a bluff that goes straight up and down below the waves, about 30 feet. Shark's Cove is a marine reserve so there's lots of fish there, and people don't hunt or spear fish or catch the fish. They're very tame, and when you scuba dive, sometimes you'll see a thousand fish on one dive. It's an amazing place because you've got thousands of pounds of energy in every single wave that smashes directly onto the lava flow. It's made this cool pond at Pupakea where the kids can go and swim in. And then it's made a series of really neat caves and holes in the reef at the base of the cliff. You can go right inside these caves, sit there, pause, and look all the way into the pond at Pupakea, and then all the way back out to sea. Big fish like this Omilu and Alua cruise by quite often. Dragon moray eels, all kinds of cool critters live in these caves underneath the reef at Pupakea. This beautiful Achilles tang hanging out on the bluff, looking down over the cliff. In the winter time, this fish would get thrashed if it was living there. Pam is inside here with a big trumpet fish. These fish stand on their head and eat smaller fish by catching them by surprise. Pam's trying to get a cool picture of them. Then this giant school of Menini, the convict tangs, comes by. These fish here are what keep the reef clean. They're algae eaters. They move from place to place and they flow back and forth with the waves. These Menini keep the algae from growing on the reef and that way the coral can grow. Back in the cage are these huge soft sponges with eels living in them, like this big white mouth moray. 
and all kinds of crazy designs inside these dark caves under the reef at Pupakea. This is a type of crestose coral and algae. It's really an amazing place, not good for surfing, but if you like the ocean, it's one of the prettiest places on the North Shore. Pipeline, on the other hand, is completely different. Pipeline doesn't have anything to do with coral cover, especially on the inside. The waves are simply too big and powerful at Pipeline to even have coral grow to start out with. The inside at Pipeline is basically just the reef's been carved by the surf, and there's little pinnacles that stick up all over the place. Matter of fact, uh, including myself, I've known a few people that have run into them, and almost got knocked out underwater. Those pinnacles are actually making now a good drag on the underside of the wave to keep the wave hollow. Corals being alive or dead at pipeline simply doesn't interfere with the quality of the surf. But out at the second reef at pipeline, you can see it's deep enough where there is some coral cover there's also just a flat reef with a big hole in the middle of it. It's pretty cool. Down in that hole are a bunch of big lobsters and eels and all kinds of cool critters that live down there. And the further out you go at Pipeline, the more coral you see because the waves are just simply don't have as much power that close to the reef. It gets deeper and deeper the further out that you go. What's interesting about Pipeline is it's like Waimea probably was thousands of years ago. A few of the rocks at Pipeline have broken off. They've started rolling around on the reef, making these little pukas, these little divots. And those little divots are now getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every year. Sooner or later, as these rocks roll around and these divots get larger and larger and larger, especially at back door, then they're actually going to start interfering with the quality of the wave. There'll be more of the deep holes, shallow reef, deep holes, shallow reefs. So we're likely to see it pipeline the wave section down the road, especially at back door, more than it does right now.
Felsieland is an extreme example of how killing the corals changes the wave. First time I surfed Felsieland was in 1970. It was one of the hollowest inside waves I'd ever rode. Matter of fact, the first wave I ever caught at VLAN, when I took off, the water was so clear, I took off, did a bottom turn, I thought I was going to hit the coral right below me, and I jumped off my board. That's how clear and how much coral coverage was on the reef at VLAN. But years ago, Velsieland was all raw country right there. When it rained, there was a number of different creeks that flowed out into the whole Bay Area there from Velsieland over to Sunset. This dispersed the mud from the rain evenly across the reef system and allowed the surf to clean the reef in a very quick period of time. This keeps the corals healthy. If you cover the corals with continuous amounts of mud, they die. But now at Velzy Land, as you can see with Pam snorkeling around and body surfing under the waves and poking her head in and out of some of the cool cracks and caves, that there's no coral left at Velzy Land. The only thing there is just algae growing on the reef. The coral died. Why did the coral die? Very simple. They built a whole bunch of condominiums right there at Velzy Land, between Velzy Land and Sunset. And now all of the rainwater is channeled into one single creek that flows out right over the top of the reef at VLAN. So there's an undue amount of sediment that's built up on the reef at Velzy Land, and it's killed the corals. Now that there's no coral to drag on the underside of the wave, the wave is much more mushy. It used to be a barrel ride every single time on the inside at VLAN. I remember watching Buttons there in the 1970s getting the most amazing tube rides, one right after the other, almost mechanical. But now half of the waves just mush out when they get to the inside. That's what happens when we kill our coral reefs. Well, let's jump over to Kauai for a little while. I live in Honolulu, and it's one of the funnest places I've ever surfed. Nice, long right-hand point. Once again, it was formed very much like Sunset Beach was. During the Ice Age, when the sea levels were down 100 to 125 feet lower, there used to be a huge river coming out at Hanalei Bay, much like there is today, but the river was 100 feet lower and it carved this big canyon in the, in the riverbed that now the sea has come back up and filled it all in and we're surfing over the edge of the layer of this canyon. Hanalei is pretty unique because it's a straight up and down cliff that goes all the way out and winds around to the point. It's really pretty profound when you get under the water at Hanalei and you're diving up and down the bowl and you see this big old ledge and you look back in and you see all these caves and cracks that go right up underneath where everyone's surfing. Back there are a bunch of lobsters, like this big old beautiful regal slipper lobster. And these red aveo veo fish, the big eyed fish. Sharks live back in some of the caves. But Hanalei is suffering a lot of problems right now. I've been studying this for about five years under the water and above the water. There's been a lot of people that have been digging in the Hanalei River in violation of some of the wildlife laws. This mud and sediment and toxins is being released out into the bay and it's killed a lot of the corals. As you can see, some of these corals were a beautiful brown, tan, greenish color. Then they turn white and then they die all together and get covered with mud and algae. Out at Hanalei, there's a couple deep holes in the middle of the reef, in between the point and the bowl. We all know it is called flat rock. It's actually not a flat rock, but it's a series of big holes, kind of canyons in the reef. Years ago, these canyons and holes were all filled with antler coral, and cauliflower coral and rice corals and all these beautiful corals. 
that made more of a drag on the underside of the wave, also made the wave hollower, but it allowed the point to connect with the bowl a little bit better. Now that all the flooding and the material that's been washed out onto the reef from the floods, it's knocked the coral off and killed a lot of the coral, and covered it with mud and sediment to kill the rest of the coral, now these big holes don't have a lot of coral coverage inside the cracks in the holes. So the reef is much more up and down. This way, when the wave breaks then, it's gonna back off in the middle section and be almost like two waves instead of one wave. Hanalei is a really, really good example of how to kill a coral reef, number one, and how that affects the surf and will continue to affect the surf down the road. And we're only talking about the relationship between the surf and the reef here. We we'll also have major problems with bacteria out on the reef that comes out of the rivers. We've been studying this new cyanobacteria that's been killing all of the corals and that bacteria has a, a potential to harm humans. So we have a lot of problems we have to figure out so we can maintain our surf reefs in a healthier condition here for our future generation. Over on Poipu, on the south side of Kauai, the coral's actually there, pretty quite healthy. These big, beautiful antler corals stick up a foot to three feet tall. They sit up on top of these rocky ledges. It's pretty cool under the surf at Poipu. It's a lava flow, but the lava flow happened at several times. So it's like one flat layer, then another flat layer, and then another flat layer. And the surf is carved pretty much kind of canyons in between these flat layers, but it's a pretty consistent flat rock throughout the whole surf area. What makes the wave good there is there are a lot of healthy corals. Those corals drag on the underside of the wave to make it more consistent, to make it more hollow and to make it connect better. So I'm happy to see over in Poipu the reefs have remained pretty good and I hope that they stay that way. Jumping back to the North Shore of Kauai, we'll finish off our tour at Tunnels Reef, Makua. It is an amazing spot and everyone, every surfer out there, all the time when they're out in the water are always thinking, Sharks! <laughs> Where are the sharks? Are the sharks going to hurt me or the sharks aren't going to hurt me? I've been diving out at tunnels for almost 15 years and was scuba diving with three big tiger sharks the day before Bethany Hamilton got bit a number of years back. Tunnels is quite a unique spot because it's an old volcano that sunk down below the waves. So when you surf at tunnels, you're surfing actually on the edge of a volcano. But there's lava tubes that lace all the way through the reef at tunnels. These are naturally formed by the giant gas bubbles 
when the volcano erupted and then cooled. Well, the lava tubes down there are quite unique and they're large, some of them the size of a small house. But that attracts a lot of the sharks because the sharks like to sleep in those lava tubes. The reef sharks are one of the ones that can actually sleep during the daytime without swimming. They don't need to pump water through their gills. And so there's a lot of reef sharks that hang out at tunnels and sleep in the caves. And they're real mellow. We dive with them all the time, go through, say hi to them. I actually, at one point in time, was in a cave with 20 eight-foot reef sharks breeding and looking straight up out of the top of the cave and you could see people's fins going overhead, surfing up above. It's really a unique spot. Tunnels is amazing. Lots of big fish there. It's one of my favorite places to go spearfish, as you can see by this big omelu that I got on the outside reef. One of the other things about tunnels is it's a turtle cleaning station, and there's lots of small sea turtles there. Like this beautiful hawksbill turtle that's making an evasive maneuver when he saw me scuba diving. I think he thought I was probably a big shark. So what happens is the tiger sharks, Galapagos sharks, and occasional great white sharks, they come into tunnels hunting the monk seals and the sea turtles. tunnels is also home to thousands of other creatures, like this array of fish that zoom in and out of the caves and rocks searching for food. One of the more beautiful creatures out at tunnels I see from time to time is this gorgeous eagle ray. If you swim very slowly, you can actually fly right next to it like a butterfly. The beautiful Moorish idol you see here actually eats sponges. This helps clean the reef so corals can grow. Many of these fish that you see here, especially the butterfly fish, eat live coral. Once again, if the coral dies, so will the fish. The sharks out there don't bite people on purpose. We've proven that over and over. I've dove and surfed with them many, many, many times. If they were out there hunting people, I would have been dead a long time ago, and probably half the people watching this movie would have been dead a long time ago. On average, only five people a year get killed by accidental shark bites. But when a tiger shark or a Galapagos shark or one of the other sharks are chasing a sea turtle or a big fish, then the turtles often will zoom right underneath the surfers and hide under their surfboards or continue underneath the surfers and go right up onto the reef to get away from being pursued by a big tiger shark. So the sharks are snapping at the turtles as the turtles are zooming through everyone out in the water surfing. Well, sooner or later someone accidentally gets bit. That's what happened with Bethany, and you notice that on all of these accidental shark bites, the shark doesn't come back and try to consume or eat the person as a general rule. Sharks are one of my favorite creatures in the world, and they need to be protected for all of us surfers. 
because they eat all of the dead and dying creatures in the sea. If we were to kill all the sharks and we walked down the beach from Pipeline, Sunset to Honolulu, it would be dead, stinky fish carcasses piled up on the beach. We wouldn't even be able to go out and surf because the water would be so polluted with bacteria. So the sharks are the garbage disposals. They run around and eat all the, the wounded creatures and all of the sick creatures. So we need to have them in our ecosystem. And we also need to understand they don't eat people and kill people for food, but people are gonna get bit accidentally from time to time. I hope you enjoyed this short tour through some of our surf spots. The purpose of this movie is twofold. Number one, just to educate everyone about what the reef looks like in the marine life below the places we like to surf at the most. It's fun and it's educational. But two, there's a super, super important aspect to this video in this movie, is that we need to raise more funds and more awareness around studying our coral reefs underneath these surf spots. Because if we don't study them, and we don't protect them, and we don't realize the changes that are happening with global climate change, rising sea levels, acidification, pollution, and other factors that are killing a lot of our coral reefs, we're gonna be left behind down the road without any coral. And if we don't have any coral, it's going to compromise the health of every surf spot and it's going to dramatically change the waves. Probably not for the better. So please visit our nonprofit webpage and Marine Research Group and get together with me so we can talk about some fun ways of documenting the surf, documenting the reef, and protecting it at the same time. Thank you for watching.